Hi, in this video I want to give you a few general tips and techniques that you can use to make more of the sound effects that you have. And I hope that this is helpful to you whether you are a sound designer or more of a video editor who is using sound effects as well. I will use the teaser that I made for my last free sample pack, the cinematic transition sound effects as an example to illustrate a few of these techniques. And I will start with a quick playthrough of the teaser, which is only around 20 seconds long. And I will show you the video on the right side here and the arrangement on the left side so you can already get an idea of what's going on. So the first tip is that you don't always have to use the full sound effect. If you look at my track here, for a lot of these sound effects I'm only using sometimes very small parts of them. And this is a great way to sometimes repurpose sounds, especially in combination with some of the other techniques that I'm going to mention. And it also can help you to make the sound effect fit the track a bit more or the scene that you're doing the sounds for. So for example, if you look at these two sounds, this one is the full sound playing and this one is just a small part of another sound. And all I wanted to do here was to give this sound up here a bit of a longer tail. And that's why I essentially just use this sound as a layer of the first first one. So since I wanted to fill this space in between this, I just added a portion of this sound that kind of fit with the sound above. You can easily see that I did this all over this track. All of these are just small parts of a longer sound. Same here, also this one and this one. If you start playing around with this, then you can easily make multiple different sound effects out of one single sample. Now the next thing is pitching your sounds. Pitching is definitely one of the easiest tools to transform your sound and turn it into something completely different. And as you can see what I did here, I pitched all of these sounds down quite heavily. And by doing that, I created kind of a tonal sequence. If we look at this original sound, this is just a really long sweeping whoosh atmospheric sound. And at its original pitch, it sounds like this. And so I just pitched this down a lot and then took a small portion of it and then just added fade -ins. I also did the same down here. In this case, the sound is heavily pitched up. We can also listen to the original here. Just by pitching it up, I made this very short transition. I did this with several of these sounds and again this is a very easy way to transform a sound and essentially you can use just one sound and pitch it in different directions quite heavily and create sounds that sound nothing like the original sound effect. Now the third tip is a very important and essential one and whether you're creating a kind of musical track like I did here with the sound effects or if you're just using a few sound effects to support your video material you need to be aware that arrangement is part of mixing and it's gonna play a huge role in whether your sound design is gonna sound good or not. If we go through the tracks I have here you're gonna see that most of these tracks don't have any plugins or effects on them. The only effects I'm using are equalizers and one track has a reverb. So there is no mixing going on because it's pretty much all in the arrangement. What I mean by that is mainly that you need to be cautious about what kind of sound effects you have playing at the same time. As you can see here, there are very few situations in this track where there is only one sound playing, but whether this is going to work or not is going to depend on the combination of the sounds. So one important thing about this is that you don't unnecessarily have sounds overlapping with each other. And that's why you can see that I have a lot of really hard cuts in this track with a lot of these sounds. You can see it right here at the beginning. This sound is a lot longer, but if you look down here, then you can see that I have three new sounds playing here at the same time. And these sounds down here already fill out pretty much the entire frequency spectrum. This sound also playing at the same time is probably not really going to give any additional value to this. And it's just going to increase the amount of energy in the low end, which I don't want in this case because I have a lot of low end heavy elements playing already. And so the idea is to give each sound its own space and you kind of have to prioritize the sounds essentially. Just decide which ones are the main sounds at a certain moment and then make sure that they can shine essentially and cut out any unnecessary sounds. And this is also why you can see a lot of hard cuts here. The one way I do this is obviously just to cut the sounds and the other way I'd like to do this is by just using fade-ins. So for example down here, as you can see, I have a lot of sounds playing at the same time. 
But if you look at this line where the Wushit is playing, you can see that I have used fade-ins on these sounds to make sure that we actually give this initial hit all the space it needs. And it's pretty much just layered with this boom sound down here. So these two sounds, because they're quite full sounds, they come in just a bit later. This just frees up all the space that these two impacts need. Also one important thing to keep in mind if you're doing these hard cuts that I'm doing here a lot, you can see that I'm using very short fade outs on most of these samples. And this is to avoid unnecessary clicks that you can easily get. So for instance here, without this small fade out. So the fade out itself can be extremely short, doesn't even have to be audible, but it's gonna help you to avoid these clicks. So the next tip or technique is kind of related to this. And another reason why I do these hard cuts all the time is because I wanna create hit points to make it really easy to cut the video to the sound effects. Because the way I usually do this, I create the track first and then I cut the video to it. When I'm creating these types of tracks, I keep in mind that it needs to be very obvious for an editor where to place the next image. And you should make it as easy as as possible for someone who cuts a video to this and give them very obvious clear hit points where they can cut to a new image if they want to. That's why it's also important to give certain hits their own space so they can really stand out. If you have too many elements competing with each other at the same time, you're gonna blur out the hit point and you're gonna reduce the effect of the hit point essentially. Especially at the end here you can see how I use various impact sounds and transition sounds to cut to new images very quickly. So in this short ending section I have a downer down here as my first hit point to cut to a new image. Then I have another downer up here for the next image, then the Wushit here for the third image and then for the last image I have this Wushit again. So the next tip is that you can easily create transition sounds just using fade-ins. Again, as you can see, I do this all the time here. So for example, this one, as I showed you before, this is just a really long sample, but using just a fade-in, I can create a very simple transition sound with this. And since I've been talking about the hit points before, you can see that usually if there is a hit point, I have some kind of transition leading into it. Like for example, this one here, here we have essentially two whooshes leading into this hit point. And up here, for example, you also have two of these simple transitions leading into the next hit point. Again, very simple tip, but you can combine all of these together. You can pitch the sounds, use only a small portion like I did here, and then just use a fade in and create a transition sound with it. Now another important one to give your sound effects a bit more movement and make it more interesting to the listener is to use pan automation, which again is something that's very simple but can be incredibly powerful. So now with the automations activated, you can see that I have a few automations on these tracks and these are all just to have sounds pan from left to right or have sounds pan from left or right to the center. In this sequence up here, you can see that I'm starting for example at the right side, then to the center, then the next one is centered again and then I just repeat the pattern. Down here, I'm doing something similar. I have two fire whooshes here, and the first one is coming in from the left side and ends up on the right side. And the second one is then coming in from the right side and goes back to the left side. So you don't need any additional plugins for this. You can just use the panning function within whatever software you're using. And this can really help to create additional impact and make certain sounds stand out. And last but not least for this video is one of the most essential and most important techniques overall for sound design. And this is layering sounds. As you can see, and as I've talked about before, there are very few situations in this track where only one sound is playing. I have very intentionally layered a lot of these sounds together. And as in this case above here, it's to compensate for something that one of the sounds is lacking. So in this case, I wanted to have a longer tail. So I used a small portion of this one. This is also a great technique to fill out the frequency spectrum more. So for example, if you need more low end information, then you can just use a low end heavy sound and layer it on top of the other sounds that are playing. For instance, here I have a downer playing on top of this Brahm sound here and on top of this Wushit. 
And so this is mainly there for the low end information again, and just to increase the impact of this a bit. You can see the same here. I even have two downers laid on top of each other because this one doesn't have that much low end and is a bit more tonal. And this one actually also has a short hit at the beginning and has way more low end. So these two work well together. And then all of this is on top of this whoosh hit here, which is just there for the impact, for the hit point, and then for the more a white noise type of reverb tail. And I think the heaviest layering for this track I did here at the end for the final hit essentially, which was supposed to be as big as possible. Besides the hit up here, I have again a downer going on mainly for the low end. And then I have two ram type sounds going on. This one is really washed out and well, as it's called, it's very distant. And this one is a bit more direct. That's also why I have a reverb on this. Without the reverb, it would be too much in your face. And then I have a bit of a higher pitched atmospheric sound here, where I also cut out a lot of the low end. So with these types of layers where the samples are really long and playing over a long time, you can't really do everything with fade ins and fade outs anymore. You kind of have to decide which of these elements is going to be your low end element, which one is going to be there for filling out the frequency spectrum in the high end, and then just do the necessary EQ adjustments to get them to fit together. So I hope that this was helpful. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you want to see more content like this. Take care.